Certainly appreciate your time. I want to talk about COVID overall uh, as we get into this interview. This pandemic now is going on 11 months. Uh, thousands of people have died in this state. Hundreds of thousands has contracted this virus. Just overall, your feeling on what we've seen, what we've gone through the last 11 months. Well, I've been very proud of South Carolina. I've always been very proud of South Carolinians, and the, the older I get and the more I see, the more proud I get. But we've, we have behaved. We have followed the rules, we've followed instructions, we've taken care of our, our neighbors, we've been generous, and uh, we took a different approach in, in government, we took a different approach from some other states. In those states, they, they tried to figure out what was essential and what was not essential businesses, and they shut down the non-essential and let the essential continue to run. We didn't take that approach, knowing that to, to someone who has a job or business, that's essential to them. And how do you really tell? The whole effort of closing some down as they did in other states, including churches, automobile manufacturing plants, was to keep the virus from spreading. But we knew from the science and the facts that the, the virus spread most rapidly in some places and, and hardly at all in others. Outside, not so much. Inside tight quarters, yes. So we looked at those kind of activities and businesses and places where it might spread the most, like barbershops, beauty parlors, retail stores where people touch the same things over and over and the next customer, next customer. And we restricted those as little as we could and took it off of them as quickly as, as we could. Uh, we think we did it right. And the, the, the proof is that our economy, we never shut down. We slowed down, we didn't shut down. And as a result, we're not suffering economically like there are in some other states, and we're poised to really take off now. Yeah, we certainly are learning more. We learn something more about this every day. But did you think 11 months later we'd be where we are right now? When did you know, boy, we're in, in it for the long haul? Well, they were, we, we were getting all kind of conflicting reports, different reports, different opinions at the beginning, but it was clear we had a problem. Uh, how long it would last, uh, no, nobody knew, and we, we still don't know how long it's going to last, All because they're talking about different strains coming in now. But we do know what we're dealing with now, and we're prepared for it, and we're working our way through it, and we'll be out of it before long. You had it. How bad was it? Were you scared? It wasn't bad at all for me. I didn't know I had it. And uh, Peggy had it too. She, she, did, she showed no symptoms at all. I got real tired and uh, of course stayed, stayed at the house. But I, I, I guess we were lucky because we just, we, it must have been a light case because we felt pretty good compared to a lot of people really had it rough. We were lucky. This goes back to a little bit of what you said earlier. Does it frustrate you though, we see hospitals are at their capacity, you see hospital workers at their limit, stressed to their limit a little bit, you then see people ignoring the guidelines. I mean, I know we have to have businesses open, I know we have to do that, but then you go by some areas and, and people are not going by the CDC guidelines. It's gotta be frustrating for you to see it. I mean, there's gotta be a happy in between somewhere. Well, we were, that's right. And there are all kind of questions about what government can and cannot do and how it ought to be done if it, if it can. But ultimately, the best, best thing to do is just to tell people exactly what's going on to the extent that you can do that, educate them over and over and over and over, let, let them know. And uh, there, there's some times when you must force a decision. But um, the more willing the public is to go along, the better. And I think in our state, people have been been um, cooperative, been smart. Uh, we, we have it, the spectrum from, from A to Z on responses, but I'm, overall, I'm, I'm quite proud of our people. Uh, President Biden has increased his target to 1.5 million shots. How do you think di distribution has gone so far as we get into distribution of vaccine and administering this vaccine? I, 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 there have been some problems to say the least. Well, there, there, there have been some bottlenecks because uh, they always are in a distribution chain. But uh, when the first allocations were made by Warp Speed, which was the Trump administration's name for that process, uh, they based it on being able to produce uh, with certainty 57 million doses by sometime in, in February. And they told us that we will get our fair share in South Carolina based on population over eight, 18 or over. 
we're about 1.5% of the population in the U.S., 1.5 over. And that's the, that's the amount that we've been getting. Uh, just a, a few days ago, the count of the doses that had been distributed at that time were around 40 million. So in a couple of months, uh, I, I think that 100 million is, is probably very reasonable because that is, we're headed towards that now. It was explained to us that Pfizer and Moderna were producing per week when this all started and they got the go ahead from the FDA. They had some already made and they were continuing to make about eight and a half, 8.6 million uh, a week. Now that it's they're up to 10 million a week and we are, are told and expect that sometime in March, it'll be much more than that. And also we have other manufacturers, Janssen and Johnson and Johnson and maybe others that are coming in. So I think we'll, we will hit that goal. Does anything change with the leadership change in Washington? I have noticed a thing so far. We, uh, we've been uh, very smart, very, very uh, determined, and very interested in seeing, learning from other states what's worked, what hadn't, what the best ideas are. And I think we've, we've avoided the, the, the bad ideas and picked up the good ideas. According to the CDC website, South Carolina ranked last in terms of vaccines distributed, but now we see one of the best with this, well, well, yeah, with this Becker's report. What's the problem here? I mean, we're the worst, we're the best, what are we? Well, we, of course, we're the best. Uh, we, we're near the top of, of everything. Uh, we are economically in our growth and all that right now, we really are at the top. I think we're in the top 10 in that Becker report says in uh, distribution, we're, we're in the top 10. But the earlier reports that showed us at the bottom were based on two, uh, the software in here and there in DC not being able to talk to each other because we had set aside from our allocation all the Moderna doses because they were going to be given out by CVS and Walgreens at the long-term care facilities and others. So we didn't count those, but in the calculations in Washington, it looked like we had those sitting on our shelf, which we did not. So that's why we got a bad grade on that, but that's been corrected now. You see this as an acceptable pace when it comes to distribution and administering vaccines? I think uh, it, it is, um, we are not moving still in South Carolina as fast as, as I want to move. It, it's been frustrating at some times. You know, we, we uh, conferred with the, with the hospitals to, to urge them to, to give more shots, and they, they did, but uh, we, we are not, using up yet everything that has come to us. There was a, a little bit of a delay there in the beginning, but we've got it going now. And what I've told the hospitals and all the others, each shipment that we get every week, and we get it every week up from the, the federal establishment, we get the, the shipments. By the time the next shipment comes in the next week, we want all those shots to be gone. We want to use it up every week, get it in the arms as quickly as possible. And we're headed towards that. We have a lot of the hospitals that are 100% that are and more of what they have been allocated because uh, the dose bottles have five doses in it, but sometimes you can get six and even seven out of it. So that's what we're doing. So if I had told you to give the state a grade, what would it be? A. No, no doubt about it? No doubt about it. Now, earlier, eh, we wouldn't be, I wouldn't do that. But, but now we are, we are moving and uh, we want to be sure that, that we keep moving. So what's your message to the people in the state who are maybe frustrated both with, uh, with the distribution not well, being able to get their no, shots? No, nobody's more frustrated th than I have been and I still am from time to time during the days, but we are, we are getting our fair share, about one and a half percent of all the dosage that is made in America. We're getting our fair share of that, but that is not enough for everybody who wants to get a shot. But so far, we're not operating fast enough to even use up what we're getting. But that's gonna happen soon in just, a, I think, just a few days or maybe a few weeks where we'll be going to zero every week before the next shipment comes in. But by that time, sometime in March, we ought to be getting a whole lot more doses, certainly by the end of March. So I tell everybody, just stay tuned and, and you can go online and you can see where all the different locations are. We've got about 156 pharmacies that had been operating for several days, giving shots, they're all online there. There are a lot of red dots on there. Those are green that are open. The red dots are those that are 
are coming on uh, that are ready but don't have the vaccine yet. And there are several hundred more that have just gotten the vaccine that'll be opening up. Our real challenge is to get the vaccine out into the rural areas where you don't have all these pharmacies and don't have the hospitals. And we're working to be sure that we do that. We want everybody who wants it, who wants the shot to be able to get a shot. Superintendent of Education, uh, Spearman, uh, has asked you to make teachers a priority when it comes to vaccination. They're not in 1A right now. That, that, that hasn't happened yet, but school's about to end. You have talked about how you want students back in the classroom, the necessity of that. Why not make teachers a priority in this case? Well, we, we have so many important people that do important functions that is, we can't, on the limited supply that we have, we can't give everybody a, a, a shot. So what we have determined to do was to look at those that are most vulnerable and that may die if they are not vaccinated. And that is the older people. If you, the average age of those who've passed away in South Carolina, and there are several thousand of them, the average age has been 60, uh, excuse me, 75 years old. Uh, we have had no deaths at all from anyone one year old through 19. We've had some infants die, but from one through 19, no deaths and very few sicknesses. Um, we have 65,000 teachers. They, they're terrific. We have, I can't remember, 750,000 students. In the private schools, uh, the, the Christian schools and independent schools, they've been on five day a week since the beginning. They have not had any outbreaks. There have been a number of reports included lately from Charleston County, 38,000 students, where they had only a handful of positive cases, and those were uh, almost all of them were among teachers and staff who got it somewhere else or gave it to each other. So we, we have to take all that into consideration. We know the older you get, the more susceptible you are, and you can see that in the hospitals and see that by, by the deaths. So it would be, I think it'd be immoral, it would be wrong to ignore the people who are likely to die in order to try to find everyone that it, we, we think is, uh, that, uh, is not going to perish and dilute, take it away from the, those who may die to give it to someone else. But we are, we are moving, we are hustling, and teachers and others are in 1B. That's the second priority, and we go get to them uh, as quickly as possible. What I'd like to do, we open it up to 70-year-olds, and, and the hospitals, where the, most of the vaccines we began at that time, uh, were, were just uh, swamped. Well, they have been working through that contingent as well as the healthcare workers and the first responders and others in 1A. What I would like to do is do what the CDC has recommended and move that on down to 65 and older. Because when you, when you do that, you get to about 80 or maybe 90% of the people who've, who actually are in real serious jeopardy. But as soon as we can do that, and remember, everybody doesn't want a shot. Right. Well, has that been a problem for you? I mean, people trying to bend your ear to try to get the front of the line, to think they deserve the vaccine more than anyone else? Yes, and, the, and everyone uh, wants, there are people in every walk of life, in every occupation, in every status in part of the state that want the vaccine, but again, there, there's some, some that don't. But this is it's not based right now. It would be, I believe, would be a mistake, would be probably unethical to do anything other than protect those who are most likely to get sick and die. And those are the older, older people. And also, as we started out, those in the hospitals who take care of the older people who come in and who take care of people who've had a heart attack and or need or desperately need medical care. That's why we prioritized health care workers and doctors and others and then also opened it up to first responders because if if, the, if the, the, the firefighters can't come when you're on fire, then you, you got a problem. If the ambulance driver's not there, the EMT, if they can't take you to the hospital, that was all geared to keeping the, those contingents safe and healthy who keep the rest of us from dying. That's what we're working through now. And as soon as we get those done, and that's gonna include the, those 65 years 
old and up pretty soon. Then we'll, we'll hustle out to everyone else. Just a couple more questions for Take you. Your time. Uh, a lot of people in the state house upstairs, we're talking about a lot of different things right now. I know you spoke about the fetal heartbeat bill recently and uh, it's COVID-19. I know it's the priority, but that's a difficult thing, isn't it? To uh, kind of balance all these issues along with COVID being way up here, but yeah. also dealing with the other issues that are important to South well, Carolinians. Yes, well, well COVID is, is taking a lot of attention because especially uh, when we had no idea what what all it was going to mean when we began. Now it's, now it's a question and we understand the virus now is, is managing the, the battle against it. So uh, we still have a lot of distributions that we need to perfect. We've got to get it out to the rural areas. We, we've got to get it all over the state. But uh, in, in, this, in this building, when you have more and more issues, you, it's, uh, you work on all of them. You just got to work harder, faster, and longer. But we've, in the recent uh, months, we've been spending most of our time on COVID because people are, people are dying and we had to make strong, good decisions to keep the economy alive because without the economy, you got nothing. And once the business is gone, they often can't be revived, but we wanted to keep people alive. I think we're doing a good job with that. I think we've made good decisions, learning from mistakes made in other places. But uh, there are a lot of very important issues very important and we just we we work hard we work around the clock and we got a lot of good help you talked about the economy uh, during this interview despite some economic relief that we've seen we've seen businesses restaurants still struggling many can't hold out much longer they say that the spring we're done we just can't do it anymore people are struggling to still find some jobs i know the economy is going in a direction that you say is positive but what's your message to the people of south carolinians whose patience has already run out well, there are a lot of us who have had uh, to test our patience. And I would say this, this is a pandemic, which means it's all over the world. And we are in South Carolina, we have made, I believe, good decisions. We've got great people. We have great leaders because we have great people to choose from. And people are willing to stand up and help and voice their opinion. And when you take it in, all into consideration, we have made good decisions, but this, this is a tough one. This is something that is going to, to keep testing us. But uh, we've come through in a lot of things in our state, starting in 1670, and a lot of other states that have never experienced, including hurricanes and battles and wars, the Revolutionary War and hurricanes, I say hurricanes, earthquakes, I mean, fires, we've had, had it all. But we are, I believe that our state is, is really shining. Now, we're suffering, but we're holding on and we're in better shape than most of the other states are because of the good decisions we've made. You talk about being tested and the final question here is, uh, it's, it has been a test these last 11 months. People want things to get back to normal. We don't have a crystal ball, but when do you see things back to normal in the state of South Carolina? Well, I think that in, in March when the predictions that there'd be much more of the vaccine coming in. And by that time, uh, we, we ought to have the networks built out in the rural areas. Uh, they, they're not, not there yet in a lot of the rural areas. There's just nothing there to, to build. So we, that's why we have these mobile sites and standing up these uh, mass vaccine. But I think when, when the vaccines start flowing more freely, then I think that will, that will give us a, a chance to, to see the, the beginning of the end. How long it'll take, I don't know. But I will say until then, I know people are tired of wearing the mask and tired to be reminded about wearing the mask, tired of keeping the social distance and all of those other, washing your hands. But we're gonna have to keep doing that for a while and we will come out of it and I'm confident based on our performance so far that we will come out and we'll be in a better position to really take off and soar than most of our neighbors in other states around the country.